A Hezbollah drone attacked the private residence of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in the city of Caesarea. He was not there at the time of the strike, and no one was hurt. This was reported by the Israeli Prime Minister's office, the Times of Israel reports. The Prime Minister and his wife were not there, and there were no casualties as a result of the incident, the statement reads. Earlier, three drones were launched from Lebanon towards Israel. Two of them were intercepted, and the third crashed into a building in Caesarea. Sources of the Sky News Arabia TV channel reported that a bomb exploded in Netanyahu's home in Caesarea. At the time of the attack, an air raid siren was sounding in the city. A drone was spotted in the sky over Caesarea, chasing an Israeli helicopter. The strikes came as Iran's supreme leader vowed that Hamas would continue its fight against Israel following the killing of the mastermind of last year's deadly October 7 attack. In September, Yemen's Houthi rebels launched a ballistic missile toward Ben Gurion Airport when Netanyahu's plane was landing. The missile was intercepted. Last strikes into Israel come as its war with Lebanon's Hezbollah, a Hamas ally backed by Iran, has intensified in recent weeks. Hezbollah said that it planned to launch a new phase of fighting by sending more guided missiles and exploding drones into Israel. The militant group's longtime leader, Hassan Nasrallah, was killed in an Israeli airstrike in late September, and Israel sent ground troops into Lebanon earlier in October. President Joe Biden says the killing of Hamas leader Yehya Sinwar by Israeli troops is a good day for the world. Speaking upon arrival in Berlin, Biden said, now was the time to move on. He called the killing an opportunity to free Israeli hostages held by Hamas and end the year-long war in Gaza. Biden said spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu from Air Force One about next steps. He told reporters he was dispatching U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken to Israel. U.S. officials expressed measured optimism that Sinwar's death might breathe new life into ceasefire talks that have failed to produce a breakthrough. Good day for the world. We got, I'm told, these are now to congratulate them getting soon more. They have a lot of blood in their hands. American blood, Israeli blood, and others. And uh, I told them that we were really pleased with his actions. 
and further that uh, now's the time to move on. Move on to move toward a ceasefire in Gaza. Make sure that we're moving in the direction that we're going to be in a position to make things better for the whole world. It's time for this war to end and bring these hostages home. And so that's what we're ready to do. That's what we're going to do. And I'm sending Tony Blinken to Israel. Uh, I guess he's going in five days, four days. Four or five days in, he's going. I talked with uh, Stevie about that. We're going to work out what what is the day after now. What, how do we secure Gaza and move on? Thank you very much. Do you feel more president, sir, about the ceasefire? I do. Do you have a sense of when you will end the war, sir?